St. Timothy's is trying to help God create a world that cherishes all living things, no exceptions, all human beings, all animals, everything that God created and pronounced good. Each Sunday, we gather to remember God's inclusive vision for the world. Each Sunday, we pray for the energy to make this vision a reality. Welcome to The Well, St. Timothy's online worship service. Welcome to worship to a time of gathering in God's word, a time set aside knowing that Christ is with us and that the Holy Spirit is flowing through us. So as we enter this worship time, we pause and just to take a deep breath in and out and in and out. Grateful for the breath of life that unites us, that is given to us by God. Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. Give us grace to receive thankfully the fruits of his redeeming work and to follow daily in the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
A reading from Isaiah chapter 5. I will sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine vat in it. He expected it to yield grapes, but it yielded rotten grapes. And now, inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I expected it to yield grapes, why did it yield rotten grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge, and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall, and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a wasteland. It shall not be pruned or hoed, and it shall be overgrown with briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his cherished garden. He expected justice, but saw bloodshed, righteousness, but heard a cry. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today is Psalm 80, verses 1 to 2 and 8 to 18. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock. Shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim, in the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh. Stir up your strength and come to help us. You have brought a vine out of Egypt. You cast out the nations and planted it. You prepared the ground for it. It took your root and filled the land. The mountains were covered by its shadow and the towering cedar trees by its boughs. You stretched out its tendrils to the sea and its branches to the river. Why have you broken down its wall so that all who pass by pluck off its grapes. The wild boar of the forest has ravaged it, and the beasts of the field have grazed upon it. Turn now, O God of hosts. Look down from heaven. Behold and tend this vine. Preserve what your right hand has planted. They burn it with fire like rubbish. At the rebuke of your countenance, let them perish. Let your hand be upon the one at your right hand, those whom you have made so strong for yourself, and so will we never turn away from you. Give us life that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. The Gospel for today is from the 12th chapter of Luke. Jesus said, I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided, father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say, it is going to rain, and so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, there will be scorching heat, and it happens. You hypocrites. 
You know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky, but why do you not know how to interpret the present time? Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. You know, most of us, myself included, are often very resistant to God's word. I think if we're honest with ourselves. There's a great story about this in the Bible. It's not one we read this morning, but I'll eventually get to the passages that we have today. Um, but it's from the book of Jeremiah. And the Lord says to Jeremiah, take a scroll and write on it all the words that I've spoken to you against Israel and Judah and all the nations from the day I spoke to you, from the days of Josiah until today. It may be that when the house of Judah hears of all the disasters that I intend to do to them, all of them may turn from their evil ways so that I may forgive their iniquity and their sin. God is desperately trying to get Judah, trying to get Jerusalem on board with God's ways. And so Jeremiah, once again, give them a word. Well, because Jeremiah's persona non gratis in the temple, Baruch the scribe takes the words into the temple and reads them. King's officials hear about these words and eventually Baruch brings a scroll to the king. And what we then hear is that Jehudi reads this scroll to the king. It's winter time. The king is in his winter's apartment and he has a fire burning, of course, to keep the place warm. Now the king was sitting in his winter apartment and there was a fire burning. As Jehudi read three or four columns of the scroll, announcing that if, you know, Judah and Jerusalem don't mend their ways, um, they're in big trouble. That when he had read some of this passage, what did the king do? The king, every three or four columns, would take his penknife and cut the scroll and throw it into the fire. You know, what a wonderful image for what we so often do, right? I mean, when I hear a passage like the one from Isaiah today and find parts of it very troubling, I don't take the passage and cut it out and then throw it into the fire. But you know what I do is I move on to another passage. I mean, I don't like to hear that this vineyard that God loved into being is now going to be destroyed. It shall be devoured. I will break down its wall. It shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. I don't want to hear that and I don't want to deal with that in a sermon. So what most of us preachers do at this point is we run to another passage. Maybe the next passage will be more pleasing. But of course today, no such luck. What do we hear in the Gospel of Luke? We hear in the Gospel of Luke that Jesus says, do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided, father against son, son against father, mother against daughter and so forth. None of these passages are easy to deal with. But today we have no other place to run. So I think the invitation today is not just with these passages, but passages like this that are challenging. Will we resist them, avoid them, literally or figuratively cut them out? and burn them? Or will we see the possibility that there is really good news? In one sense, the good news is this. You know, God cares enough about 
the vineyard, to speak the truth to it. I have loved you into being. I have done everything that you could possibly have expected of me to do for you. You know, I delivered you from Egypt. I brought you to this place. And here's the deal. If you don't mend your ways, the whole thing is going to fall apart. It is not going to be what God intends. There's no justice. There's bloodshed. There's no righteousness. God cares enough to try to make it better rather than to say, oh, whatever. Judgment can bring hope. If people respond to the warning, something new can happen. And then, of course, this Jesus who is so troubling, so divisive today. The good news in that is that the only way that most church communities or communities of any kind will become more of what they're called to be is if somebody comes into your midst and tells you things you don't want to hear. You know, conflict is the prerequisite of growth, of going deeper. And Jesus was doing this all the time, wasn't he? He was including in his meals people that others thought unclean. That was disrupted. That caused division. You could see people going home from a meal like that and around the, the meal at their household becoming very divided. What was that guy up to? Oh, I think it was a good move. You know? He challenged people to forgive. Even 70 times 7. Boy, that can be disruptive. I don't think we should forgive them. I do. He challenged people to share what they had, to cancel one another's debts. Talk about disruptive. He talked about love and enemies. I mean, you, you can just bring into this conversation all the other things you know that are not easy for communities to deal with. But if what God is going to bring into being is the kind of community that really is the kingdom of God, that community governed by God's gracious ways, these words will need to be heard. None of this is easy to hear. Most of us find some way to, to burn the scroll. You know, we don't want to hear the modern day prophets talking about climate change. But it's hard to, to I think, live in denial now, isn't it? With what's going on in our country and countries throughout this world and polar ice caps. If we don't, if we don't hear and nothing's going to, to change. The good news is these words just keep coming. You know, every time that in this chapter 36 that a scroll is dispensed with, Jeremiah just dictates it again. After this scroll is burnt, it says, then Jeremiah took another scroll and gave it to the secretary, Baruch, son of Nare, who wrote on it at Jeremiah's dictation all the words of the scroll that King Jehoiakim of Judah had burned in the fire and many similar words were added to them. <laughs> 
you know, what, what the Bible wants us to know is that these words will just keep coming. That whether or not we welcome them in, they'll come again in some other way, through some other prophet. Today, let us commit ourselves to being open to hear these words, to allow them to disrupt us, but in doing so to bring into being the possibility of something new. And to rest assured that if we don't let those in today, guess what? They'll come next week. They'll come the following week. They'll come any time we hear the Bible. The Holy Spirit will be relentless in challenging us to see things we need to see. And in the end, making this vineyard more and more of what God wants it to be.
dear God. The lectionary readings are full of references today to destruction and enmity from earlier days, but we live in the midst of such times ourselves. A political system created to promote the common good has devolved into discourse of polarization and ugliness. Whatever our personal political leanings, all of us can feel shocked by how far we have strayed from the type of world you envision for your children. Forgive us, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Come, Holy Spirit, raise up prophets who can redirect us to healing our rancorous ways. Turn our anger into resolve to do better, to be better. Transform our differences into wisdom based on mutual respect. Help us all to focus together on addressing the searing needs afflicting your children in the world today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As Jesus taught us to do, empower us to serve as your hands and feet for those in your flock who especially need care those who are trying to rebuild their lives after violence, war, accidents, natural disasters, and loss of loved ones. We pray especially for your children in Ukraine as they struggle to live in the face of overwhelming challenges. We also pray for those suffering from illness in mind, body or spirit, those struggling to support their families, those whose lives have been harmed by racism, sexism, and other collective sins, those who have given up on hope and the possibilities of life. Help us wisely discern how we can help others and grant us the strength to turn discernment into a new reality for them. We pray for those on our prayer list, especially Nancy Emery, Dory Dreisbach, Scott Gunn, Jean Klein, Kendall Jamison, Eugene, Robert Wolf, Phyllis Wolf, Mike Voris, Nancy Rydell, Clifford, Jesse Loomis, Bryce, Jackson, Bob Emery, Tommy Leibcap, Grace Owens, Angela Berner, Tom Keller, Suzanne Burton, Sayla Maisie Hart, Lisa Bernheisel, Wendy Jones, Brandon Frereking, those grieving the loss of loved ones and for your own concerns. We pray for the dearly departed, especially Don Franklin. Heavenly Mother and Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. 
For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. It's a gift to be able to be here with you today in these summer months. And um, life and ministry at St. Timothy's, we are planning for the fall with spiritual formation for children. And there are going to be a number of different adult spiritual formation options as well. And so if you would like to know more, please let me know. We're going to be celebrating diversity with the children and youth. So that is a gift to be able to have that and bask in God's unique diversity of creation and of humanity. For birthdays and anniversaries, we are joining in the celebration. So if you have a birthday or anniversary this week, um, we are praying for you, for our birthday people. Watch over your child, O Lord, as the days increase. Bless and guide that child wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in thy heart may thy peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. For those celebrating anniversaries, this prayer is for you. O oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and the church. Continue to bless these your servants, that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace. Through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.